this is how your uh, AutoCAD screen looks. So first let us uh, see how to open the AutoCAD. So after the installation is done, the AutoCAD 2007 icon will be displayed on the screen like this. So once you double click on it, the AutoCAD screen will be opened to you like this. Or else there is another option that we can go to the menu bar. After going into the menu bar, we can search for the AutoCAD. In the AutoCAD also you can go, in that way also you can go. You can go for the AutoCAD, this one. The AutoCAD 2007 will be there. You can click on it so that it will be open to you like this. Whatever it is, the process is set. So once it is finished, many of the people might get black color here. But uh, to be it in a visual aid aspect, I have kept it in a white background. So if, if this is not, if the black color screen is not coming to you, then what you have to do is, you have to press on file, then go for new, then we'll have a template, this one, uh, the select a template option will be shown to you. In that select template option, you have to select acad.dwt and after acad.dwt is selected, then press open. Once you press open, there is a new sheet opened here, you can see the sheet name is also changed. We can see it in the title bar. This is the first thing that is title bar. In the in the beginning, we have it as drawing one dot dwg. Now we are having drawing two dot dwg. And uh, the let, let us see the main aspects which are there in the screen. This as usual, like all others, we have a menu bar in that we have file, edit, view, insert in the way these are all available. And we have separate uh, different types of toolbars which are there here. These are all toolbars we call them. See, so this is one toolbar. This is second toolbar. So we have different different sets of toolbars here. So these toolbars, in some cases, they will not be present on the screen. But uh, when in the if you want to see, if you want to have these toolbars, what we have to do is that we have to right click on the open space. We have to right click on the open space below the title bar, uh, title bar and menu bar. We have the space now. On that we have to click right click here. When you click it, we'll be having these all toolbars. These all toolbars available. Okay, uh, please everybody mute yourselves. So if this is not obtained, or we can have it in this concentration also. You, can, you right click at this space, and we'll have four options. That is ACAD, custom, lock location. In that we'll have four options. In the four options, we have to press on ACAD. Once you click on ACAD, we have all these toolbars which are available. In that, uh, if you want to draw for uh, uh, like. Um, um, what is that? If you want to have 2D diagrams, especially, then for those we need to have certain toolbars like uh, uh, what is this uh, dimension, draw toolbar, then modeling, then modify and properties, and uh, I think these are enough. These these toolbars are enough for drawing two-dimensional diagrams. If you want to have a uh, three-dimensional, then we need to add uh, modeling, and uh, we can go for solid editing, and uh, we can go for visual styles. These are all there necessary when you are going for uh, a little more ahead that is like if you want to go for three dimensional things so that is about this and this is this white color space which i'm having with the xy here this is called as uh, the workspace or work arena in this you are going to draw uh, that is something like if you, if you want to give uh, a uh, simple thing it is something like a uh, sheet we can say your this is this white color one is uh, your drawing sheet so then uh, in the bottom we have three options we have model layout one and uh, layout two these this in these three we are presently working in the model thing in the modeling we are having it. coming to the layout one and layout two these two are basically used for printing these things whatever we are drawing these can be taken to print out sessions so if you want to go to the printouts then what we'll do is that we, from the modeling area we'll come to the layout area and here this in the sheet we'll arrange these things and then we go for the printing by using the printer operation then below this uh, we have an command line we have the command line in this uh, what I, what we can do is that we can select the tools or the things like with the use of commands so basically autocad is a command calling software so if we, we can either use your mouse pointer to select certain tools supposingly this is there this is a line tool if you want to select the line tool we can go to that place and we can click with the mouse or else we have another option that is we can l enter both does the same operation so we can use command bar this we can print uh, we can uh, type these things here or else we can use the mouse pointer to select the tool 
so both ways it will work so if you want to go with a certain pace uh, or in the basics or the in the beginning sessions mouse pointer usages will be very helpful to you that is you can go to the toolbars you can select you can move your mouse pointer onto these tools then it will already show the name of them line polyline in that way it will be showing to you okay, then we can select it but uh, when you go, uh, get a good expertise on this you'll understand that uh, by using the command solely it will be very easy to you because if you just press l enter and use the mouse pointer it will be very easy for you to draw so in that way command uh, we can even uh, move it down and up depending upon your requirement i'm moving it later and down and uh, you see that um, the if if supposingly the command bar is lost to you by some of the other things you have uh, removed it you have removed it you have closed it then for that what you will do is that we can press control 9 control 9 is the shortcut for recalling that and in the bottom we have uh, these things uh, the functional keys functional keys like snap grid or the polar o snap o track ducs dynamic lwt and model these are all the functional keys these also have shortcuts with f uh, f1 f2 f3 on your keypads so uh, if if you are talking about ortho if you are talking about ortho what happens is that uh, when the ortho button is done only 90 degrees lines will be drawn when the ortho button is done only 90 degrees lines can be drawn when they are talking about polar when the polar is on so we can draw the cross type of lines also not only 90 degrees lines we can draw other angular lines also that means basically whatever the bottom parts these functional keys are there these are useful to you for uh, like a uh, certain amount of functions so in this case the drawing a straight line is a function for that function to activate we have to press on uh, this ortho button the or we can press the shortcut as f8 f8 is also can be done. and then we have o snap and o track these things are basically called as object snapping and object stacking so if you are talking about this one this line is an object when you are talking about a line this is an object this is having three end points again this is an end point and this is an end point and this one the middle point is which is highlighted is for catching the object we can move it by catching that object in the same way every object has its own points so if these points are there only then we can draw the remaining things like we supposingly i want to draw another line from this corner point then how this corner point is highlighting to me by using the o snap and o trap so if uh, what happens is that you click on the o snap right click on the o snap and go to the settings then you have all these things set in the object snapping we have all these things are like that is end point mid point center point node quadrant intersection these are all things available there. so for my consideration i am selecting select all and i am pressing okay and uh, this is not the general method which they use in the offices and all. what i reason if if you want to select only end points what they will do is it will clear all and just end point i'll select and okay by this only end points can be selected when i'm drawing something only end points can be selected so in that way by requirement they'll select these things by for the objects but in this case since you are in the introduction class only i'm selecting all these things for my reference purpose and i'm pressing okay so if if uh, what happens is that if if the ob object snap and object tracking is off then if i want to draw this line exactly from this end point that is not highlighting you can see that it is not highlighting reason is reason is very clear that the object snap and object tracking is are off so if you want if you are turning them back on then if i use the line command you can see that the end points are highlighted here so if these end points are to be highlighted what you have to see is that object snap and object tracking are on and uh, you can see when i'm pressing a command like supposedly this line command i have pressed what is happening there there is some information on the screen like specify first point some 32 point 32 is available if this is to be visible to you on this screen we have to see that the dyn whatever the dynamic input is there that is on in, in the functional toolbar so if supposedly this is off then i press this line command you can see on the screen there is nothing information showing to me there right so if if that is to be visible then what i have to say you have to go for the dynamic option the dynamic input is there no the dynamic input in the functional toolbar i have to go there and press it then uh, it will be visible and since we are drawing it in the model the model is to be pressed here model or paper source so i am pressing model it should be pressed so what about the lwt is that lwt is basically called as line weight if you click it the line weight will be shown if you unclick it the line weight will not be shown what do you mean by line weight basically line weight is basically say supposingly this line is there See, see, this line is there i want that line to be a little dark or uh, like some bold so if i go to the properties toolbar and change its uh, shape i am giving some six so basically this particular line is of certain width which is not showing to us for that to be visible to us in the functional to in the functional bar we have to press lwt so when lwt is pressed you can see that the width is also shown for the line so in that way for the, these are the things which will be done by the functional thing functional tools in the bottom so uh, let us uh, talk about some toolbars which are basically needed for the drawing of 2d figures
So and the whatever the center this x y is shown, this is called as UCS user coordinate system. So even this thing can also be moved from one place to another place. See, since it is here. Uh, if I want to move my paper source that side in this side, because when I am drawing in the paper, I have the ability of moving my paper that side in this side. Here also that should be there now. So for that case, what will be shown is that in the mouse uh, wheel, were, wheel will be there now. In the mouse, right click, left click and center wheel will be there now. So we have to click on the wheel and uh, you see, you can see that the uh, hand symbol is being visible on the screen. Whenever the hand symbol is there, that hand symbol is use it for picking and moving one place and that place. So when I'm picking and moving this, basically the paper is moving from one place to another place. If I'm drawing something like this and I'm using uh, this hand symbol and moving that side and this side, what is happening there? Uh, paper is moving basically. So once the paper is moved, you can even add some figures and all again, again, come back to these things. So that is how it is done. Somebody took the presentation. Um, uh, don't press other things on the things just see and listen to this because if you are pressing something you will be presenting so what i am presenting will be gone anyhow uh, coming back to the class that that is the basic introduction about the uh, autocad screen whatever it is visible we are seeing after opening it so let me say we'll discuss about uh, one one toolbar. Let me talk about draw toolbar. What is draw toolbar and uh, what are the things available in the draw toolbar? So this draw toolbar is in tick position. That means already there is draw toolbar on the screen. Let me go and pick it. So here is the draw tool. In the draw toolbar, we have commands like uh, line, construction line, polyline, polygon, rectangle. In that way, these are all there. So basically, when you are drawing something, we generally start with lines only. No? So let us start with the line. So this is line. So for uh, calling the line option, we have uh, some options like first one, use your mouse pointer, go to the draw toolbar, click on the line. Then it lasts specify first point or else there is another option like you can go to the command line and in the command line, just press L enter. If you press on L enter also, it will ask specify first point only because L enter is the, uh, the shortcut for the line command is L, capital L or small L, no problem with this. Things. L and then you press enter, then it will be start. Then you have another option also in the menu bar you have draw option if you click on the draw then we'll have all these things line polyline everything is there so here also we can go line and so basically if you want to draw these things there are many options for calling these things no need to worry or remember or uh, bactify these things you need not by heart these all things because these are all already available on the screen just you can move your mouse point on that side and this side and if you have any doubt regarding the icon also then you just simply paste your mouse on the icon for one second then it will show you that uh, name also line if i moved it this is construction line then this is polyline in that way it will show you also so don't worry about uh, remembering and by hearting these comments so if you are practicing these things automatically they'll come so let, let me come back uh, to the first command that is line command so i'm calling it by just pressing it on the mouse pointer on the screen so line so then it is asking specify first point so first point let me say the first point is zero comma zero when I pressed comma, what happened? It has moved from the first box to the second box. And the first box is locked there. So this this can be done in another way also. That is, press on line command. I pressed it. That is a line command. Then zero. And instead of pressing comma, which is there on the keypad, I am pressing tab. Even tab also uses the same thing. Even tab also is used for moving it to the another place. So this is also I'm typing zero. So the first point is selected somewhere in the bottom. That is zero comma zero. Then it is asking specify next point and it is showing two options. One is uh, uh, the blue color box, which is there, which is of 2760 and something. And this side, it is another box, which is 31 degrees. So it is basically asking us in polar coordinate system that is magnitude and uh, direction is it is asking that is it is asking angle of the line and how much the length of the line is there so you can give that way or else you can give it in another way something like 10 comma 0 i am giving 10 comma 0 comma 0 and uh, 10 comma 0 so i have drawn it so now i am pressing escape escape is basically used for uh, uh, exiting the command so the line is drawn, but it is not visible to us. Here comes the another command which will be very helpful to us. That is called as zoom. Z O O M zoom. If you click on zoom, or else we can uh, the shortcut is Z only. Z and press enter, whatever it is. Then it will ask you 
different options like all, center, dynamic, extends, previous, scale, window. In that way, it will ask you many options. So here I am pressing uh, uh, the extends options. E, enter, I am pressing. Then what is it saying? I have, it is showing all the things which I have drawn. That is E, enter. This is the line which I have drawn. So the line 0, 0 and 10, 0, whatever I have drawn. It is. Since it is drawn from 0, 0, the initial point is at the origin. That is X and Y. That is origin point. It is. If I don't want this X, Y to be interfering in my diagram, then what I can do is that I can press on view, then go to the display. Then in that display, we have UCS icon. In this UCS icon, I can press origin in the tick position is there now. So I can press untick position. If I press untick position, the origin is directly shifted from this point to the left to bottom corner. Even though I am moving my mouse pointer that side and the diagram I am moving that side and this side, the XY whatever is there, it will not interfere with my diagram. It will be in the left to bottom corner only. If you want to commit back, what is it we can do? It, we can do it in the reverse option that is view, display, UCS icon, origin on. So when the origin is on, the origin comes to the exact origin position. If I don't want it to be interfering my thing, then what I can do? View, display, UCS icon and the origin can be off. So that it will come back to the left bottom corner and it will stay there only. Even though I am moving up and down also, it will be staying there only. It will not move from its course point. So that is about uh, drawing the line. If you want to draw another line, simply you can go for line command. Select the end point like this. This is the end point. If you are having any doubt, just keep your mouse pointer there and wait. So that it will itself show the end point information. So this is, it is highlighted now end point. So end point. If you want to start from the midpoint, what I can do, I will come here. I will approximately go to the mid option. So here there is a triangular option which is highlighted. In the triangular option, when I put my mouse there, it is highlighted that it is a midpoint. So from the midpoint, I am starting and I can draw it. So now I want to draw a line with uh, 10 mm and 45 degrees. Say that way. So uh, then what I can do is that simply I can press on mm, and now press tab instead of comma press tab. When I press a tab, it has moved from the first option to the second option that is degrees option. Here I am saying that I want it to be 45 degrees. Then I am pressing 45 degrees, 45 and I am pressing and press enter. Then automatically there is a line drawn which is of 10 mm and which is of uh, uh, 45 degrees. If you want to check, then what we can do is it. I will check it. I will just check it for my course. Is it really 45 degrees? Up? So it is exactly 45 degrees only. So no problem. So that is about your line command. Or else you can have another type. That is, you can start it like this. Just, just I want to draw a box supposing. Then what I can do is that we can go for ortho button. Because when I am pressing ortho option, then we can uh, only draw 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 270 degrees lines only. So in this way I can give 10 and I am press enter. So that it will come this. And uh, then I will move my mouse pointer top. Then I am pressing again 10 so that another uh, draw, I mean another line is drawn and I am moving my mouse pointer to the left in the 180 degrees and I am pressing 10 and I am pressing enter. Then th the third line is drawn for this square and finally I can come back here and I can press it here or else since I want to close at the first point I have an option called close or undo. Therefore I am pressing C and press enter so that it is closed here. So this way also you can draw the different type of lines by using or the button in on position. So that is about the a line command. Coming to the polyline command, in the polyline command also, on, uh, the it will be working in the same way like the line command. But uh, the condition is that uh, the, when you are using the polyline, it is uh, all the four lines or the five lines which are drawing will be like a single entity. So you can, I am drawing these many lines now. Uh, once I am pressing escape, if I am clicking on it, what is happening? It is selected in, the whole thing is selected in a single entity. It's like a single entity. But here you can see, when I am selecting this, it is coming like different entities. One, two, three, four lines it is shown. So the use of polyline is that whenever we are drawing something by using the polyline or PL and P L I N A P line, polyline. So whenever I am using and drawing this like this, it can be selected as a single entity. So that is the plus point of the polyline. These polylines then can be uh, edited by using a command called PE by using a command called PE PE enter that is polyline edit polyline edit then it will ask us to select the polyline when you click on the polyline editing option then it will ask you different options like join close width edit vertex width spline. in that way you can do whatever you want I am pressing fit suppose when I have pressed the fit what happened the polyline has turned it into a uh, some kind of circular object or a cardboard object 
So basically what happens is that these polylines uh, are a single entity you now because these are single entity those can be converted into curves easily or splines easily. So that is one more plus point of this polyline. So coming to the another one that is construction line. The construction line are basically used for drawing uh, like uh, infinite length lines easily. So here you can see if uh, say supposingly I want to draw a straight line like this and uh, I want to have this straight line at all these points only that is uh, I want to draw another straight line here. I want to draw another straight line here. But I want all these things to be in a single straight line. These, these end points should be in a single straight line. Then what I can do is that I can use this uh, construction line. I can use this construction line option. And uh, I can select at this point. I can draw a straight line like this. And press escape. Come out of the construction line. Now I can move these things. Whatever the lines are there. I can move these things as per my dimensions. Like this. So I can just move it to the exact point. So once the diagrams are totally drawn. That means this, this construction line basically acts as a reference line. Once these all points are drawn, if you don't want it, what we can do simply, we can select it and we can delete it. Construction lines are something like that. For reference purposes, we'll use the construction lines. So coming to the next one, we have seen three options, that is line, polyline and uh, construction line. Then we can go for the rectangle option. Or we can press REC enter, REC enter. So or we can use it, uh, select it here, rectangle. When I'm pressing rectangle, you can, it is it, simply asking first uh, corner and second corner. Basically, it will ask this corner and this corner. So, simply I can give length and breadth and automatically we will get the rectangles. When I am selecting the rectangle also, you can see that it is selected like a polyline. Because if you are selecting any corner, all the rectangle is selected. It is like a single entity. It is not a different, different lines. So, when you are drawing the rectangle also, it will be selected like a single entity. So, uh, that is about rectangle. The rectangle basically can be drawn with another option also. That is something like we can use line command, line command, and we can give the length and breadth, and automatically we can draw it like this. In this way also we can draw a rectangle, right? So for drawing the rectangle, we can use different options. And uh, then we have uh, polygon. The command is polygon, P O enter. So when I am selecting the polygon, it will basically ask how many number of sides you want. So I say supposingly I want to draw a hexagon. If the hexagon I want to draw, then it is six sides, right? So I'll press six and I'll press enter. Then it is asking specify center of a polygon. So I say supposingly this is the center of a polygon. Then it is asking inscribed in a circle or circumscribed about a circle. Two options again. Say supposingly inscribed in a circle. Then whenever I'm moving that side or this side, that is the mouse pointer whenever I'm moving in any direction, then automatically the uh, hexagon is being drawn with the centroid to vertex as the radius. Centroid to vertex as the radius, it is being drawn. We have another type of option also that is uh, like um, say supposingly I am giving 25 and I will press enter. So basically the diagram is drawn, that is polygon is drawn but it is not visible to us. How to make it visible is that I can press Z enter, E enter, that is zoom extends. So whenever the zoom extends is done, all the diagrams, whatever is drawn on the paper, will totally visible on our screen. Just uh, what, whatever the visible area is there, on that visible area, it will be visible. Coming to the same thing, we will draw by using circumscribed about a circuit. Polygon, number of sides is 6, enter, and specify center like this. Instead of inscribed in a circuit, circumscribed about a circuit. And now I am drawing. Now we can see the difference that instead of centroid to the vertex, we can see that the centroid to the midpoint of the edges is selected here. Because here we are drawing a in circle, and once in circle is drawn, around that in circle we are uh, drawing this polygon. Say we will give 25 only in this case also. So you can see there is a slight difference in the size. So let me check the dimensions once so that it will be easy for us. This is 25. This is 28.8. So what is happening? So whenever you are drawing by using in circle or x circle or inscribed in a polygon or inscribed in a polygon, a circumscribed about a polygon, we are uh, we don't have the option of getting the edge sizes perfectly. So if you want to have the edge size perfectly, then what we can do is that select the polygon, select the polygon, and you give the number of sides as per your requirement, say 6 in this case. And uh, instead of going for center of the polygon, we have another option which is shown in the command line, you can see there, it is edges. So instead of uh, pressing center, we can press E and press enter. So that will ask edge points. So now the edge is nothing but the line which is going to be the one side of the polygon. Say, supposingly, six sides only I want to draw. No, I want that to be 25. So, select like this first point and select like this second point. That's 25 in this case. 
So now you can see when I am selecting the dimensions, you'll understand it. So it will be exactly 25, right? So that is the plus point of this. So instead of drawing the polygon by using circumscribed or inscribed in a circuit, what we can do is that we can go for polygon, okay, supposedly five sides. Center of the polygon, uh, instead of that, we will go for edge E enter. Then select the first point and select the second point in this way. Then you can draw the polygon which will have exactly the dimensions which you are required. So, so if you have information regarding uh, center to the vertex or center to the midpoint of the edge, then you have to go inscribed or circumscribed. But in this case, we can go with the edge purpose. Only. So, edge is the best option. So then we have a circle option. Circle basically requires a center point, so it lasts center point. Once center point is done, we have a radius which is being highlighted there. But if you want to go with the diameter, then what I can do instead of uh, uh, giving the radius, we'll press D enter. So then you can see the line has uh, increased. Instead of uh, it to be the exit from the center to the end point, it is coming beyond it and it is coming until this point. So you can see here. So uh, if, I, if now I'm saying 50 as my diameter then this is circle is created. So we can have circle by using circle a center point and a radius or else we also have the option of center point and diameter. Rather than this we have some other options also which is not shown here like uh, whenever you are drawing it instead of um, circle center point we have another options which are shown to you in the command. The command bar you can see specify center point for the circle or 3p 2p ttr. 3p, 2p, ttr. What are these? 3p means 3 points. Say, supposingly, I'll press 3p. 3p, I'll press enter. So, then it'll ask first point, then it'll ask second point and third point. So, basically, it'll draw a right, right angle triangle and uh, along that right angle triangle, it'll create a circle like this. So, whatever the three points which you have selected, all those three will be in the on the circle. So, that is about a three point circle. Then we have two point circle. Two point circle means what? Simply the first point and second point, which is basically the diameter version. So, we are giving the first point as somewhere and second point as somewhere. Then it is basically drawing a straight line and taking that as diameter, it is creating a circuit. Then we have another option that is TTR, tangent, tangent and radius. So, say supposingly this is first point and this is second point and I am drawing, let me say I have drawn a straight line like this and like this. So, this is uh, I am giving selecting circle and using TTR, TTR. And I'm selecting this is the first point and this is the second point and I'm giving some radius as some 50. Now you can see the two points are selected with the 50 radius. Uh, thing. So this is a tangent, this is a tangent. For those two tangents and with a radius of given 50, the circle is created. In that way also we can draw. So depending upon your requirements, we can draw. So circle, for drawing circle also, we have different options. Not only circle and radius and circle and diameter, we have these things also. Then we have a uh, uh, arc option. The arcs also can be drawn. It is basically ask a center point or the starting point. So, first starting point, second point and third point. In this way, you can draw arcs. Rather than this, we have another option also. That is, go to the uh, like uh, draw option. In the draw option, we have arc. In the arc, we have three points. Start center end, start center angle, start center length, start end angle, start end direction, start uh, end radius, center start end, center start angle, center start length. In that way, we have different options. So depending, these are all like self-explanatory only. We can say, 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 supposingly start end angle. So start end and an angle of some 90 degrees I have given. So it is from, this is the starting point, this is the ending point. If we draw two straight lines from these points to the center and if we select the angle in between it, we will get 90 degrees in that way. Depending upon the requirement, we can select these uh, options like arcs options and we can select center, start, end. So this is center, this is start, this is end. So we have drawn an arc. In that way, you can draw different types of arcs. So, these are the basic things which are there in the draw toolbar. These are enough. We have another option called revision cloud. We have like this. So, this is basically used for uh, uh, writing some information on the worksheet if you want to write something here. So, uh, anyhow, uh, since the information is I have told about writing, let us write something here. Say, supposingly, I want to write my name here. How do I write on the sheet? The command is MT. Uh, M for uh, move and T for tools. In the so basically, multi-text, we call it as multi-text, we can say, MP. So, MT, pr uh, press MT and click on enter. Then it will ask, uh, specify first column. So, in this way, I am drawing a window. Once I have drawn the window, then it will ask, this text formatting toolbar will be opened, or the uh, window will be opened. In the text formatting window, we have different options, like standard text, uh, this is the text height. So, say, supposingly, I have uh, selected some word, Anna is my font. 
when the word and a font is selected and it is asking specify text height say supposingly something height and width then it is even asking bold italic underline in this way options also there even you can write with different colors also i am selecting black only in this case because the background i have kept white no so black is okay for me then i am pressing uh, whatever is information is required i am putting it there like this and then press okay so once you press okay it will be shown to you like this in some cases uh, what the many people will do is that uh the selected text they will not change the height say supposingly 0.11 is there so many people after pressing okay they say that the text is not visible to me it is not coming they'll expect but basically if you zoom zoom whatever you have written is there already but it is very small so that it is not visible to us so for it to be visible what you have to do we have to go there double click it and uh, select all the text select all this text and change the height then you will get to see it perfectly so how i am moving front and back is that by using the mouse wheel uh, if i am uh, rotating it front it is zooming in and if i am rotating it back it is zooming out so in that way also we can use the mouse wheel not only for uh, selecting it and moving that side and this side also front for zoom and back for zoom out in that way also we can select it right then coming to the next one this is about writing some information so these are all the things which are there in the dot toolbar we have seen the dot toolbar in the dot toolbar we have seen line command line polyline construction line polygon so these are all basically necessary for me to draw almost uh, if you are able to draw a curve and a line these two are enough for drawing almost all diagrams of the 2d just a, a line and a curve these are only things which are there in the two dimensional diagrams say supposingly i am drawing something like this and uh, for this i want to have some uh, dimensions so how do you select these dimensions is that we have dimension toolbar this is the dimension tool where is this one second say so this is the dimension toolbar in the dimension toolbar it will have options like linear align in the linear option we can select the, uh, for the straight lines that is like 90 degrees or 0 degrees lines if these things are there then linear is very helpful to us so i'll press linear directly this first point and this second point and drag it outside then this is shown to you 65.72 is something is visible if this is not visible so if this is not visible how can i make it visible is that go to the dimension in the dimension we have dimension style if you press on the dimension style dimension style manager will be opened that is this window will be opened in that window we can press on modify if i press on modify you have another window which is opened that is modify dimension style in the modify dimension style i'll go to the text here the text height is 2.5 if i want to increase it i'll increase it in this case it is not necessary for me it is okay and symbols and arrows also arrow size is 2.5 it is also good to me okay and in the primary units i have precision of 0.00 if i'll press 0 only then press okay then press close what happened here 65.72 instead of that i am getting only 66 here so the uh, the next uh, whatever the decimal points are there those are removed instead of going it in the uh, instead of going to the dimension style manager we can uh, also go from the format also the format also will be having the dimension style you can see here we also we have in the dimension toolbar so here also we have dimension style here also we have the dimension style right so we can press in the format also we can go to the dimension style modify again i'm going to the primary units and keeping this I press okay and press close then what happened again 65.72 is there so depending upon your requirements again so that is about linear dimension say supposingly there is a cross line say from this point to this point like this we have a cross line like this so for this cross line if you want to give the dimension by using linear what happens is so this is the first point and this is the second point and i'm dragging it left side what is it showing to me the first point from the first point and the second point also it is drawing the straight lines only and it is showing the same 65.72 here but this line is 65.72 not this crossed line whatever this uh, diagonal line is there that is not 65.72 for such type of angular lines for such type of angular lines you have another thing like aligned this is the aligned in here also the icon also is a little bit cross you can see so you can select that aligned dimension and then select this as first point and this is second point and as you can see whenever dragging it it is coming as it is parallel to this line almost will come parallel to that line and this is showing as 104.31 here so right so align dimensions are basically used for drawing or uh, giving the dimension to the crossed lines or the angular lines and uh, luckily when you are using the align dimension align dimension can also be used for drawing the giving the informations of uh, uh, linear also so you can select 
aligned i mean uh, aligned dimension is selected and i'm selecting it the first point and second point so by using the aligned dimensions i can even give the dimensions for the linear also so aligned will be very useful so uh, next one is uh, arc length say supposingly there is an arc like this so i want to have the length from this corner to that corner then we use the arc length option so arc length is selected and if i press the arc and i'll keep it like this then this is 73.71 is the arc length so that is about this then i am drawing a circle say supposingly i have drawn a circle like this i want to exactly get the radius of it then we have radius option this is the radius option select this and like this whenever you are giving the radius it will be showing as r something if you want to give the same i uh, mean same the information by using the uh, say like um, diameter information so we have diameter option also here click on the diameter and click it like this again. when i am giving the diameter you can see the the uh, the dimension is showing from one corner to the another corner the total diameter is being highlighted and then the information is written there as 554.62 the symbol is also changed again so this is very important information when you are giving the dimension when it is r it is radius when it is phi it is uh, diameter so that is about the giving the dimensions so supposingly there are two straight lines like this this is the first straight line and this is the second straight line and there is some angle between these two so how do you specify that angle is that we select the angular option in the dimension toolbar and that angular option is selected and uh, we can select the first line and select the second line and we can have the angular information also there. that is 39 degrees in this case so in that way we can even have the angular dimensions also be written so this is the basic things which are required for giving the dimensions to a uh, drawn figure that is first drawing i have shown once we have drawn something then we have to give the dimensions so the dimensions is shown and uh, once you have drawn something there is a possibility that you will draw mistakes on it say supposingly i have drawn like this three things so unnecessarily i have drawn this i don't want this to be there so what we are doing basically is editing so now we have another toolbar or modifying these things for modifying this thing we have another toolbar called modify tool so this toolbar is called as modify toolbar in the modify toolbar what happens is that we have options for modification of the diagram which we have drawn so first we have seen drawing then we have seen dimensioning now we are talking about modifying something say supposingly whatever this line is there i don't want it for that what we have is that we have an option called erase erase so click on erase and then you click on that it will be erased simply for this we have another shortcut also that is select it and in the keypad we have delete option we press on delete option automatically it will be deleted so in that way also you can go so then we have say supposingly whatever it is there i want to exactly replicate this exactly replicate this say supposingly i have drawn a circle also here so i don't want to draw it again with the same dimensions i don't want to draw it again so i'll just select all these things and use copy option okay selection i have not talked you know we'll just talk about selection and then go back to the modify tool so we have two types of selection if i'm keeping my mouse pointer here and i'm dragging it to the right bottom corner that is left top corner to the right bottom corner there is a blue color uh, space which is shown there and uh, you can see the line is solid line same way if we come to the uh, right bottom corner to the left bottom left top corner if i'm going the space is visible in a green option and uh, the line whatever is there it is in a dotted line so what is the difference between these two selections is that if you want to select all these things what we can do is that we can keep it here and we have to see that all the things are coming inside the box all the things that is coming inside the box and then press it here everything is selected here whereas coming to the left selection you need not see that we we should have all the things here inside so we need not select like this you need not go for just simply if you are just keeping like the small box which is just touching these two things those two things can be selected here also the same if you are just touching it it will be selected in the same way. so if you want to select it just uh, touching is enough when you are selecting with the green selection that is left top uh, right bottom corner to the left top selection or else we can come in this way what is the use of these two things say supposing i want to select only this circle then i can go for like this i can select like this now you can see even though the straight line is being touched but since it is not totally inside only the circle will be selected so if i press it here only the circle is selected now in the left uh, selection also the same thing happens just i'm just i'm uh, touching the circle and i'm not touching anything else so i'm touching only circle then only circle is selected so in that way selection also works now i'm coming uh, talking about the copy tool uh, copy command the shortcut is cbo enter so if i select the copy then it is asking select objects <coughs> excuse me so it is asking select objects so i am selecting all these objects and press enter 
then it is asking specify base point. Supposing like this is my base point, and I am selecting it and keeping it beside. Now what has happened here? Whatever the diagram is there, it is being copied and pasted it inside. Even now, I can select all these things, whatever it is there. Let me say control, I am selecting control R. And using copy command again, I am base point here and I am keeping it base point here. So now you can see the steps are further more drawn. So in that way, the copy command is basically used for drawing. Say, supposing I am selecting all this and I am using copy command again, I am selecting this as my base point and keeping it here. So what has happened? How many types I want, those many times I can just copy and paste instead of redrawing all these things. So basically, that is one plus point in this case. Because uh, when I are drawing it on the paper, if you want to draw one item only, it will take much time. If you want to repeat the same item without any small change also, then it will take hectic amount of time. So for that case, this copy command is very useful to us. So that is about copy command. Say, say supposing I want to draw a I section. I section means it will be like this, right? I. So this is an I section, right? So, right. Instead of drawing it in uh, this way, I can just simply draw half of it and just mirror image it. So mirror image option is available for us. So that means I can just start from here. I can finish it like this. Like this. And simply use mirror option here. M I enter. The shortcut is M I enter. Mirror option here. Then it last select objects. I am selecting all these objects and press enter. Then it last specify first point of the mirror. This is my first point of the mirror and this is the second point of the mirror. Then it last specify erase the source objects. Erase source objects means whatever the first selected objects will be there. Those should be erased or should not be erased. In this case, I don't want them to be erased. So n is already there now. So I am just pressing enter. So what happened? Whatever the left side is there, the right side is also obtained in the same. So this can be drawn in a different things also. Mirror image, instead of doing it here, I can even do it some other place also. Say, supposingly, I don't want the mirror image from here. I want it a little bit distance. Say like this. In this case also, we can go right. I'll select a mirror option. I'll select all these lines. And I'll press enter. And this is the first one. And this is the second one. And press enter. So you can see now, with how much distance it is selected, whatever the mirroring is selected, at the same distance it is coming in the opposite direction also. So that is the use of these mirrors. So mirror image will be exactly the opposite version of the selected image. So these mirror images will be basically used for drawing symmetrical objects very easily. So whenever there is something symmetric, then we can use mirror image and simply replicate it in an opposite direction to get a full diagram easily within fraction of seconds. That means instead of drawing full diagram, we can we can go with the one fourth of the diagram or one eighth of the diagram and then mirror imaging it and then finish it. So that is about the mirror command. Then we have, uh, say, supposingly, whatever this diagram is there, uh, say, supposingly, there is a circle like this. If you want to have this circle with a distance, uh, like how much, what is this distance? Say, supposingly, 10 mm I'm giving. So this is the 10 mm circle. So, say, this 10 mm circle is to be drawn uh, like uh, 15 times this way and 15 times in the, uh, that means 15 rows and 15 columns I want it to be here. Then what can be done is that I can select it, I can go for the copy option, then select it like this. Uh, it will ask the initial point, then keep it here, then keep it here. In that way, I can I can select and draw. But it will take a maximum amount of time. Uh, rather than that way, we have another option called array option. If you click on the array, then we have rectangular array, polar array. It'll, eh, now we will talk about rectangular arrays. As I told, I want to have 15 rows and I want to have columns as 10 columns. So 15 rows and 10 columns I want. And now it is asking row offset and row column offset. And the objects to be selected, I did not select it. So select object. So this is the object which should be selected. And press enter. Again, come back here. 15 rows and 10 columns. Now row offset and column offset. One one is there now. Let me say preview and see. What is happening there? It is coming uh, disaster. It has become a disaster. So I don't want that. So basically what this offset is, the distance between one plane to another. So let me give 10 here. And here also I'm giving 10. And then preview. It is also coming in between because 10 radius is selected. I don't want it to be attached. I want it to be beside of 1. Then now I am giving 20. Then we will get the perfect because radius is 20. Diameter is 20. Will be. Radius is 10 now. So diameter is 20. Then press preview. You can see it has come perfectly. Then press accept. Z enter. E enter. Now you can see we have uh, 15 rows. 1, 2, 3, 4. In this, uh, 15 rows are there and 10 columns are there. So simply just by giving these things, it is uh, 
uh, the one whatever the offset is and the uh, row offset and column offset if these things are perfectly given what happens it will become very easy for drawing these things so say supposingly um, i want to draw a clock say like this i have a 50 mm uh, circle like this and uh, this is the clock i want to have the uh, once you want to once you draw the clock what happens i want to have a uh, the numberings right so here we'll have one two then one two three four in this way we'll be having so this is the 12th position say i want to draw these circles at a different positions like one two three four five six seven remaining other positions so that means i want to have them at this point and then here and the, here in that way i want to have on this curve whatever this curve is there on this curve i want to have so for that case also we have the option of arraying that is polar option that is polar array so in the polar array also it is the same way it last select a number of objects select the objects so i want to select the object this is the object i am selecting only that circle is to be arrayed so i am selecting that object in the center then it is asking to specify center point so center point i can't select this because if that is the center point there only it will be rotated uh, this is the center point of the arc so i am selecting this is the center point center point is also arrayed how many number of things are required in this case i want 12 because i am drawing a clock and how much angle it is required it is 360 degrees is rotated because the clock has a total 360 revolution no? so definitely 360 is right so 12 and 360 is okay i have given then go for the preview so okay 12 circles are drawn exactly then press accept so right so if you want to have these in a curvaceed path then we have to go for polar array if you want to them to have in a straight line path we have to go for a rectangular array so depending upon your requirement array can be done so arraying option will be useful for drawing multiple objects in uh, either rows and columns way or in a uh, circular fashion way also, whatever it is required or say supposingly i want to draw the clock button also is it from here to here i have selected the, this line also i want to select draw it in a different aspect uh, different positions so i'll select this select a ray option in the polar array option the object is already selected now i'm selecting uh, center point this is the center point then uh, same 12 and 360 okay preview accept see the line is also drawn so now the line is drawn that is the hover line is drawn and also the center the side left center uh, what are the position of 1 2 3 4 is there that is also there so in that way you can use it even for designing purposes also it can be used also see say supposing i'm drawing a circle like this with 50 mm and i'm drawing another circle of say say some uh, like the same 50 mm like this now we can go for array say supposing i'm giving 12 only uh, select object this is the object i'm selecting and press enter so then this is the center point i'm selecting this as the center point and press okay what happened now we have some design also so even the autocad is use it for select drawing and creating not only models the designer aspect of you also we have this uh, facilities in this so then once this is drawn i want this all to be moved exactly nearer um, with very less distance between these two diagrams only no these things everything should be moved here say then what i can do is that use the move command here I'll select the move option. Select all these objects and just press enter. And base point it is asking base point. From there to I'm moving it a little bit. So what has happened? I've selected all those objects and moved from that position to this position with uh, some base point. So once it is moved, the object is removed from the beginning position, right? So it's not in the case of uh, copy. When you're copying it, the initial object is also there. But whereas uh, move option. the total object is moved from that position to this position in that way it is moved then uh, say supposingly we have drawn a diagram like this say 20 mm and this is 20 mm this is 20 mm and this is also 20 mm i have drawn a box of size 20 20 20 20 but i want it to be a little bigger that is 40 40 40 40 so then we have an option called a scaling option this is scale option So when I press on the scale, it asks select the objects. So select all these objects and press enter. Then specify base point. This is the base point. Now it is asking uh, what is the scale factor. Say supposing the two I have given. So what has happened? The size is increased. Let me check the dimensions. What has it become? Forty it has become. I have drawn with twenty. Or else we can go in reverse way also. That is scale option. Select all these things and. Uh, select all this and scale option select. Select it and uh, base point. This is the base point I'm selecting. Instead of going uh, up way, I can go with the down way also. 0.25 I'm pressing. Scale factor is 0.25. So what has it become? It has been reduced to one fourth. In that way also you can. Do. So we even if you are drawing all those things with one scale, that is uh, with, say supposingly everything you have drawn with uh, 10, 15 in that way you have drawn. 
and you want all of these things to be reduced to half of it then we can use it scale option and we can so instead of redrawing something with a reduced scale we can just use the scale option for reducing it so that is about scale then say supposingly i have uh, uh, drawn like this and uh, unnecessarily there are some extension points which are obtained here. so if i want to remove these extension point what i can do is that just there is an option called trim option here when i use the trim option it will ask select objects so i am selecting these two objects and press enter then it will ask select objects to trim so this object is selected and this object is selected if these two objects are selected automatically those two are trimmed to me so that is how you use the trim option say supposingly another way like this say um, i have an extension line up to here i want this line to be extended to the this corner so for that we have another option called extend option once extend option is selected then it will ask select objects i will select these two objects and select extend option and then press this line until here so what is happening the extend and trim option acts like vice versa so if you want to extend the line we we'll use extend command if you want to remove the extended line whatever the extended line here is then i want to remove it so select these two lines and use trim option and whatever the trimming is there will be trimming like this so that is about the modify toolbar these are the important things in the modify toolbar and we have properties toolbar with this properties toolbar the introduction part can be stopped in the properties toolbar uh, we have option like by layer by layer by layer what are these by layers is that this is uh, color controlling and this is type line type controlling and this is line weight controlling the first three are this is one is color another one is line type another one is line weight the line weight is shown to you in the beginning case only the line weight is basically uh, giving the width of the line say supposingly i want this line to be a little more dark then i select it but it is not visible to me to make it visible what i have to do i have to press lwt that is in the functional toolbar lwt is there i'll press on lwt so that it is visible to me. i can even change the colors also say supposing i'm selecting it and i'm selecting in the uh, color control i'm giving some red color here you can see the red color is updated so if you want to give line color and line weight and line type what do you mean by line type is that the lines can be of different uh, types say supposingly in the other option you can see load so here you have different different types of lines so in this way we can have different different types of lines say supposingly i am drawing a supply line for the gas line so gas line i am selecting it and pressing okay so this line is a gas pipe line which i want to show it on the diagram so select it and go to the uh, second line type control and gas option i am selecting it and press it then what happened the line has been changed to gas 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 that is gas pipe line so instead of uh, writing it again as a gas pipe line simply the line itself indicates it. so the, in that way you have different different types of line whatever it is there we can go to the other load and whatever it is required those things can be selected and you have zigzag option i'm selecting zigzag option like this okay so i want to give this one as zigzag option so select it use zigzag option so that zigzag line if you want to uh, uh, change the shape also it is option is there that is in the other we have the global scaling factor it can be of different sizes i'm pressing 0.5 in this case now say so suppose 0.5 then press okay so it has reduced it scale so in that way depending upon your requirement you can go with the properties so properties toolbar is basically for the lines so the line or the curve whatever is drawn those can be given some color those can be given different sizes and shapes and those can be given some line weight for those line weight to be visible we have to use the functional key lw so those are the basic toolbars which are required for drawing 2d di diagrams in the thing and uh, oh, say supposingly i want to take the print out of this what i will do is that once this is there after all the diagram is finished then i'll go to the layout 1 or layout 2 uh, i'm pressing layout 1 in this case so this is layout 1 the, all the layout 1 is done. so here as you can see whatever the diagrams i have drawn all are present here so once you click on file and go to the plot option plot that the shortcut is control p once it is there you can see that it is uh, selected the plot layout 1 whatever the layout 1 which i have selected for that layout 1 the plot uh, dialog box appears in that we have a uh, the first one is a page setup it is not necessary to give in the second one it is printer setup so printer is not connected to my desktop so what i am doing is that i want to change it to the pdf version so i am clicking on that none and i am going to the dwg2pdf.pc3 the dwg2pdf.pc3 i am selecting it and after the selection is done paper size is there in the paper size option iso a4 297 by 210 that is the basic uh, iso a4 printed paper version so i am selecting that and press apply to layout once it is applied to layout just go uh, just close it and check it if it is exactly fit or not so as you can see the dotted uh, the whatever the box is there it is coming out of the dotted line so keep it inside the dotted line even you can drag it and uh, move it from that side to this side once it is done 
if you want to if, the, if it is like very small if it is very small inside like this you want to keep it to the whole size of the paper then what we can do is that z enter e enter in this way it will be total size is coming then uh, if you want you can use mouse or mouse also mouse wheel i am pressing uh, moving it so for uh, moving it that side and this side if it is perfectly fit then okay if you think it is okay then go for the file then use plot option everything is already done then press okay then it will ask where to do it on the desktop generally i will stay there. in the desktop in the new folder whatever it is there in the new folder i will press uh, this thing whatever the file name i want to give i will press on the file name and press save once it is saved everything is done or else I don't want it to save for printed version. I want to save it for my reference version. Then what I can go is that I can go for the model part. I can go for the file and in that I have save option. I will set save option again same uh, desktop, new folder, save. Now I have set, uh, I have uh, what is this uh, saved two types. One is a drawing file and another one is drawing layout. The layout is basically PDF version. This is the PDF version. Whereas the drawing file is basically the AutoCAD version. So drawing file dot dwg files whatever is there it will be opened only when the AutoCAD is there. Whereas the PDF file can be opened at any place even in your cell phones also the PDF file will be opened. So that is about the saving and uh, uh, like uh, opening these things also. So this is the introduction part of the AutoCAD version. So if you are familiar with all these things it will be very easy for you to start drawing ASICs. As uh, the videos are already available in the channel. Uh, my youtube channel you can go through them and uh, if there are any doubts you can uh, just comment there this video also i'll keep it in the youtube channel for your reference if uh, by network issues or anything if you are not able to listen perfectly it will be also there in the youtube channel you can go there and you can check even you can say pass out to your friends also see uh, instead of uh, waiting for you to uh, get a system and work on that if you are getting familiarized by these videos only it will be very easy for you to work on the uh, software when the system is there with you so for that case, we have uh, kept this class even in the holidays version. So use this facility and uh, all the rest. So I will stop the class here. Uh, if there are any doubts, you can uh, even uh, contact me in the cell phone or you can uh, even use it in the uh, comment version also. Okay. Thank you. Bye.